Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another knife review for you. Today we have the Cold Steel Bush Ranger. This is a brand new model from Cold Steel. Just came out. Pretty awesome knife. It is definitely designed for more outdoorsy sort of tasks. It is based on their original fixed blade knife that they have made for many, many years. Now it comes in a folding version. And there are a lot of really awesome things about this knife. One thing not so awesome that in almost any other knife I'd probably say was a deal breaker but in this one it, it kind of isn't and we'll get to that i'll explain that as we go on so a little teaser stay stay tuned but a pretty cool knife s35 vn steel 139.99 uh, comes with the usual cold steel construction very thick g10 with no liners and their ubiquitous triad lock nice little thumb plate opening they call this kind of thumb disc but it's obviously not round um nice awesome really cool clip point kind of almost bowie-ish kind of uh blade i i really love the blade shape on this great for outdoorsy stuff great for bush crafting it is a uh, reversible clip and you don't have to use two different clips like you do on a lot of a lot of cold seals it has actually just a complete normal ambidextrous clip which is pretty cool uh i love a whole lot of things about this knife it's it's pretty great it is big it's a, it's a pretty big thing, that's for sure. Let's get into stats to explain that these are all half-inch squares in this background, by the way. I'll line it up against one. You have an overall length of about 8.4 inches, blade length of 3.5 inches. You have a uh, blade thickness of 0.16 inches. Handle thickness at its thickest point of 0.67 inches, so quite a thick, beefy handle. And a weight of 5.4 ounces, which uh, is not light, but it's not bad at all for a knife that's this beefy and overbuilt. I have to say, that, and that's a great thing Cold Steel does. They nail that all the time. They make it, yeah, they, they make a lot of knives that are big and heavy duty, but uh, aren't ridiculously heavy. So that's pretty cool. Let's do some size comparisons to get things going, uh, which will lead to some more discussion. First of all, one of our standards, we have the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. And another one of our standards here, we have the Benchmade 940. It's obviously dwarfs a 940. And here's one that's a, a bit closer. Let's do the Ontario Rat Model 1. Very similar in overall length to a Rat Model 1, but obviously it's, it's a bit beefier, especially in the handle than that. And now... We're going to compare it to a couple of cold steels. We will compare it first of all to the American Law Man. Sorry, I bumped the camera there. It's a, it's quite a bit bigger than an American Lawman, for sure. This has the snaggle tooth deploy thing on it, which I need to get off my butt and do a review on. And another knife that I think people may debate between uh, this and this, if you want a cold steel, this is the Recon One, which is bigger by a significant bit. The aspect ratio isn't showing that. Let's switch them so you can just kind of see. It is quite a bit, the, the Recon one is quite a bit bigger than the Bush Ranger. And now here's a knife that in a lot of ways this reminds me of. We'll get to it in the conclusion. But uh, for some reason, they are similar in almost no way whatsoever. But the Buck 110. It, it just kind of reminds me in, in purpose and in usage like a buck 110. And as you can see, it's pretty similar length, a little bit less than the blade, obviously a bit beefier, switch the aspect ratios there. But for a lot of reasons, just especially this buck 110, which is the Smoky Mountain Knife Works exclusive with the pocket clip and the thumb disc, it just, I don't know, just kind of kind of reminds me of it. But let's talk more about this knife. We'll get more about that in the conclusions. But all right. The looks wise, I think for what it's designed to do, it's definitely designed to be an outdoorsy kind of knife. I think it's kind of cool. I think they picked a good color for it. I like this kind of earthy brown a lot more than I like the kind of militaristic OD green. Um, it's the shape of it's uh, not not uh, aesthetically displeasing at all. I really like the aesthetically. I like the look of this blade. I like that clip point. I'm always a sucker for that. I mean, it definitely looks utilitarian for sure. No one's ever going to call this thing pretty. Uh, not no day of the week, but it's, it's not really meant to be. Um, I don't I don't mind it. And quality wise, yeah, it's a it's a nice higher end cold steel. Again, it's 140 bucks, which is kind of a lot for a cold steel, but uh, it's it's really nicely done. Blade centering is perfect. The G10s milled very well. There aren't any sharp edges sticking out or anything. 
Like I said, I do love that they've switched now to a totally reversible clip. I think that was a great move on their part. And yeah, I have no real complaints with this at all uh, as far as quality or aesthetics go. Again, not pretty, but for what it's meant for, perfectly fine. Now let's get to this blade. It is S35 VN steel, which is really good for this price, but previously Cold Steel used XHP. A lot of us, uh, myself included, when we heard that the they were switching to S35 VN, we went and snatched up some XHPs while we still could. Both of my other Cold Steel larger knives are XHP. Uh, there's nothing wrong with S35 VN, obviously. It's a great, great steel. I just like the XHP. I thought for the personality that Cold Steel put out, maybe XHP little harder duty i thought maybe that was uh maybe that was a bit better but in this case uh, you know that this is the only choice you get and for the price s35 vn is great it's perfectly fine i also like for the purpose this is meant you do have 0.16 uh blade stock which is a good beefy blade you have a really nice beefy tip which for outdoorsy stuff you're going to be doing some piercing things so that's really good it's not very thin behind the edge. I have to say it was like 28 thousandths behind the edge. It's pretty thick behind the edge. Uh, and it's got a fairly abrupt flat grind here. It's not going to be a slicing dream. But as far as working out in the woods and doing heavy duty stuff, it's going to work great. So I don't really complain with that. The uh, sharpening choil, not awesome. It just kind of runs off there right up against this nice hard line. But again, that's that's not the end of the world. I for the purpose that this knife is meant for, I think the blade is really good. I actually think the blade is really great for that. Uh, where this knife really shines to me, I have to say ergonomics are outstanding. This is a knife, if you're using this out in the woods, you're going to be doing, you're going to be pushing really hard on this thing for significant amounts of time. If you're, you know, trying to whittle something or, or hack at a tree or whatever you're doing, you're, this is a knife that's going to get a lot of really hard pushing time on the hand. And it's perfectly designed for that. I have no hot spots whatsoever. It works really good. This is not a forward finger choil, but you can, if especially if you're pulling back, you can kind of move up, move your hand up a little bit if you have to. Excellent, excellent, excellent ergonomics. It is really, really good. Uh, now let's talk about the carry. This is not meant to be an EDC knife. It definitely is not, and it isn't. Uh, it does carry very high. The weight wise, and as far as how it fits in your pocket, it ain't the end of the world it's in your pocket, I can say. I did I did EDC this a couple of days, and it was tolerable. It was fine. There's nothing sticking out here. You you can kind of squeeze your hand by it, but it does stick out a lot. Not great. Not a great carry knife, but it's not meant to be. This is meant to be for hiking, backpacking, uh, hunting, things like that. And it and they you don't care as much about how deep it carries in your pocket, how much is hidden. It has a good lanyard hole on it uh, for what it's meant for. It's really good. Now, let's get to the deployment. That is where this is a bit controversial. So, uh, let's compare this to... Let's look at the Recon 1. Now, in the Cold Steel Recon 1, which actually has one of the best backspring, backspring perfection things that any, any Cold Steel has, it is not for the triad. The triad lock is known to be really hard to release. The Recon 1's always been pretty good. So let's see if I can do this on the camera. You release the Recon 1, and the blade falls. Let's see, hits you right there. Everybody's safe and happy. It's all fine. The American Lawman, I did uh, bend the backspring on this a bit. This, the American Lawman is actually pretty stiff out of the box, but I did bend this backspring a little bit on my personal one. But again, drops, hits that finger choil. All is right with the world. Perfectly fine. Uh, the back spring on the uh, Bush Ranger is closer to what it is in the Recon out of the box. It's actually, it's a very light spring. But uh, I am not going to do that because this cut is from my kitty cat. Uh, I'm sorry, other way around. This little cut is from my kitty cat. This cut is from this knife. Uh, it is, if you push that, you push the triad lock and it lets go, You it has no choice but to guillotine you. There is no other choice. There just isn't. There's nothing to catch. It's it's gonna cut your finger. So to me, this is a two hand closed knife. That is, uh, it's it definitely is. Um, I the triad lock is super strong. That's great, especially for what it's meant for. But it's a two hand closed knife. If this was an EDC knife, 
that would be a deal breaker for me. But this makes no, this, this does not even pretend to be an EDC knife. So I'm kind of okay with that. And they are making a cheaper version called the Bush Ranger Lite. And from what I can see in pictures of it, it's lesser materials and stuff. It, it maybe maybe is designed to be a little bit less bitey than this, but I'm not sure. I won't know until I have one, and I'll get one. But um, it has a secondary lock and stuff on it. But uh, yeah, this this is definitely two hand clothes knife for sure. But on a bush knife, is that the end of the world? No, probably not. If it was again something I was going to carry every day, something even like the American Lawman is kind of meant to be carried every day, it's that would be a deal breaker. If this thing bit me a hundred times, I wouldn't want anything to do with it. But this, I just know it's going to do that. And I know it's two-hand clothes and not something I'm going to carry every day. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of relatively okay with it. I wish that it wasn't that way, but I'm relatively okay with it. So, and I can't, if somebody wants to put in the comments how they figured out how to close it one-handed without getting bit, I'd love to hear it. But uh, it's very, very difficult to do. Now, uh, so I guess that kind of brings us to our conclusions. As I said, it kind of reminds me of a very modern Buck 110. I'm sure it's not going to become as much of a um, classic as the Buck 110 has, but, and the Cold Steel line, yeah, it's just, they they both have kind of a clip pointy blade. They're both meant, more, they both were, you know, born from outdoor use. The Buck 110 has become a lot more than that, but, but it's been made since 1963, so it's had a minute. But, I don't know. Something about them just reminds me of each other. Also, this bit me once. <laughs> so, but that's because of the one hand open thing. If you uh, don't, this buck one ten with the the thumb disc. If you if you don't get it quite far enough, and you think you did, it'll pop back and get you. But um, it doesn't regularly bite me like I think this would if I kept trying to close it one handed. But yeah, it just it does kind of remind me of that same kind of purpose. There's that kind of outdoorsy, infinitely lighter. That's for sure but outdoorsy kind of knife and great steel and a good value 140 bucks not bad at all for s35vn it is definitely tough as nails i if if you break this knife that your broken knife is probably the least of your worries probably something really really horrible has happened if you manage to break one of these it's way overbuilt and I hike, I hike a fair bit, mostly day hikes and stuff. And I have been kind of thinking about a hiking fixed blade. And I really kind of got this one in for review. But uh, I think I'm going to keep it around to use as my hiking knife. Because I'm not a huge fixed blade guy. And this is uh, pretty hardcore. And I think it's going to be pretty awesome for that kind of use. So I would even take this when I go bike camping. Which I'm on a bicycle. I don't want a lot of weight. This isn't that heavy. So to take as my kind of heavy duty use knife when I'm bike camping. I think this is a pretty good choice for that. So I think they've done a great job. I really do like it. The the one hand or the two hand closing is annoying. It definitely is a two hand closed knife. I do wish it was one hand uh, because the spring tension on it is perfect for that, but you're going to cut yourself. So not the best thing in the world, but I think for the purpose of this knife, I can kind of deal with it. Uh, that's going to be up to you. If that's a deal breaker, that's a deal breaker, and I totally understand. But I think if you get one in your hand, you'll kind of realize quickly, this is not an EDC knife, it's not an everyday knife, but uh, it's a very good one. So good job, Cole Steel. I'm, I'm eager to try out the cheaper one. Uh, I'll let you know what I think of that when I get it. I've been Brian. Have a good one.